Hi, Ibro. How are you doing? I'm phenomenal. How are you? I'm I'm good. I know you you are now Kojo, right? <laughs> yeah, I was born on Monday, man. Kojo. Great, great, great. great. So, uh, let's start, let, let me start off with your. You've been to Ghana a few times in the last two years or so, and each yes. time each time you've been here and gone back, what do you take from your visit, particularly in terms of our music? I mean, there's tons of support for the local music scene. Um, you know, I have a good relationship with Sarko D and Stoneboy and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Quessy Arthur and, you know, a couple of artists from there. So, I mean, it's a great scene. You know, I haven't spent um, so much time in the northern parts of Ghana. Like, I haven't made my way to Tamale yet or Kumasi. Um, but, you know, around Accra, and you know, out in the Bolta area, and, and kind of you know, in the in the southern parts. But you know, there's a lot of positive vibes, a lot of support for local music, um, and a lot of opportunity for you know growth also. Great, uh, fantastic. And so, what does it mean exactly to be the head of uh, R and B hip hop at Apple Music? Um, well, mostly it's, uh, I have a team that um, handles most of the playlists that are tailored towards hip hop and R&B. Um, and, you know, we're listening to music and interfacing with artists and, and trying to figure out, you know, ways to help their song get exposure inside Apple Music, um, as well as finding opportunities where, you know, we can feature artists from other places around the globe uh, on the North American side, as well as, you know, um, feature, you know, the playlists from different places. So, you know, uh, hypothetically speaking, um, you know, there's a version of Rap Life, which is North American, but there's also a version in South Africa as well. Um, so the version in South Africa actually features it's a hybridized playlist that features artists from South Africa that have achieved a high enough chart position and, and a regional profile um, of, of a, you know, of a success to be featured in the Rap Life playlist. So working with the other regions to, you know, feature that music. Great. And how, how, how easy has it or difficult has it been uh, when it comes to trying to incorporate African music, i.e. Afrobeats, into all of that? Um, you know, it's obviously, you know, Afrobeats is a broad term, right? Because there's, you know, artists like Kwesi Arthur that lean more hip-hop, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, even Stoneboy that has more of a dancehall Caribbean, you know, slant to his sound, or Sarko D that makes both hip-hop as well as, you know, some of the more, uh, you know, Afrobeat sounds. So the biggest challenge is obviously language. Right? So, you know, if it's if there's an if there's mostly English, it's it's easier to get it to translate and have success on the North American side. Um interestingly enough, since this is all, you know, happening over the last four or five years where we've been asserting you know, uh, and featuring music um, in in the, the hip hop genre page or in the R and B uh, genre page inside Apple Music, and trying to get people exposed to the artists and the music. Um, you know, it's it it becomes a regional thing, right? Like, so in New York City, where there's a larger African population, or in Atlanta, you know, we see more consumption of the music from other regions versus when you break outside of that where maybe the African population is a little bit smaller in different regions around the United States, you start to see uh, people not responding to the music. So it all just takes time. It's the same thing with reggae music, right? So, you know, if there if there's a lot of Jamaican patois in the music, uh, a lot of people who don't, you know, who only speak English, they can't understand. You'll even hear people in America say they don't understand uh uk artists <laughs> yeah and it's like that is we speak american that's actually english mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we just speak some sort of american english thing um but you know but it was the same thing with music that was coming out of the south southern region of the united states it took time for it to make its way into new york 
um, and, and Los Angeles just because of different dialects. So it's, it's all about consistency over an extended period of time, creating opportunity for people to uh, interface and learn the artists, learn the culture, learn the music, feel the music, um, and, and just keep communication lines open. So, you know, it's still very, it's still very early. Um, and, you know, one of the things I talk about a lot is just um, for me personally as a fan of music from around the world and is I don't like hearing artists try to conform their sounds to other sounds to just get popular. And one of the great things that's happening right now is you hear the music coming out of Africa. It sounds like uh, it is organic and from the region. It's not trying to be, you know, like something it's not. And, and that for me, you know, because music is so important to black folks worldwide, culturally, mm -hmm. it is our part of our identity. It's a part of how we share stories. It's a part of us. So, I, you know, seeing artists not have to conform to gain popularity is a step in the, in the right direction. Right. And we've seen a lot of uh, collaborations between uh, African artists and American artists. Uh, is that a good way to go? Uh, what Absolutely. We mm -hmm. we Absolutely. Uh, you know, both with American and Caribbean American and, and uh, you know, Western artists going to Africa and being and being on those records, as well as African artists you know, coming stateside and, and jumping on these sounds. I think that's the best way to do it. But how easy, you know, because how, how easy is it for an artist to, from Africa per se, to be able to reach out and uh, have this opportunity to collaborate with a, an icon that he would want to work with? It's, 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 it's about relationships. You know, clearly it's about organic relationships and it depends on the artist, you know, um, uh, you know, I would say you'd have to ask that to the artists. I'm sure as you gain popularity in Africa and people are talking about you in the in the parties here in America where, you're, where your music's being played and you become a name that people know, it's obviously easier to collaborate. I mean, the same thing goes for if you're an American artist. You know, it's any, any, any American artist that's trying to break on the scene, it's not like they can just DM Chris Brown and Chris Brown's going to, you know, <laughs> jump on that song, you know. Yes. Uh, so it's all about notoriety and, you know, reaching a certain level of success sure. uh, when it comes to getting an artist featured on a record. Sure. I mean, every and, day... And, and, ultimately, mm -hmm. and ultimately, it's got to make sense, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, artists, you know, when they collaborate, they want it to feel organic, I believe, most of the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I mean, every day in and out, uh, hip hop, uh, R&B. There's, there's a new artist, there's a new new song. As somebody who sort of curates and plays some of this music, what do you decide on when you are choosing, say, your playlist? Um, well, it's you know, for what we do for the ecosystem, is different than what I do personally. You know, for Apple Music and the way we choose music for. The, the, the entire hip hop and R&B ecosystem, you know, we have a, a tiered system of playlists. You know, some are kind of like the, the, the smaller playlists, regional playlists, um, you know, playlists that are catered to a specific type of sound. So artists can start there and their performance as they perform in one playlist, they, you know, graduate to a larger, more mainstream platform. Um, you know, so it's really about, you know, watching the, you know, putting songs in places that make sense for them and then watching them grow over an extended period of time as you give them more opportunities to grow. Because like you said, there's so much music coming out. You know, I don't know anyone on our team that thinks they have all the answers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? We all personally, yo, this is a great record and, you know, it may not do well. And versus there may be a record that the audience is, is already streaming because the artist has a big fan base on social media or, you know, maybe the song went viral on a TikTok or who knows how the song, you know, maybe it started playing, uh, you know, on a certain, you know, um, in a certain club somewhere or a certain region. 
And those songs get their way on the playlist and those become big successes. And, you know, they just got the, the audience chosen, you know, not us. So there's multiple ways that a song uh, becomes popular. Looking at the trends now, what should, what, what should we look forward to? Um, I look, I'm just looking forward to, you know, I, honestly, artists being able to, you know, put their music out and be themselves and, you know, and create and collaborate. Honestly, I'm, I'm hoping that the, the, what we're seeing now can continue, um, over an extent, you know, it's so new. So, you know, for me, you know, I, I guess I never really, I'm not a predictor of where things are going. I just hope that we get more of this upliftment of African music, African artists and connection of African people, uh, around the globe. Honestly, you know, uh, this year when I was in Ghana and I was seeing, you know, the different festivals that were happening and, you know, just looking at, you know, when we first started talking to uh, His ex his Excellency uh, Akufo Ada Nana about, you know, coming back and bringing black people back to Africa to reconnect with culture. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I had no expectations other than I just wanted it to be you know, second nature for black folks to consider, you know, Africa and, and, and reconnecting our culture. And so with the music, I see it the same way where I just want to continue to see, you know, black people be able, you know, as an American black person who knows how, um, how disconnected, you know, black people are with not only each other here in America, but just with the origins of where we came from. That's really all I hope for. Because that reconnection is, you know, brings more joy and brings more upliftment and brings more, you know, love and self love. So that's, that's really it. Man. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Ibro. It's been, it's been great uh, talking to you. Yeah, pleasure speaking to you as well.